Hi everyone, uh, Lauren here. This video I wanted to make is uh, more of an educational video on something I went through while I was on the road, and that is I got sick and uh, I went to the doctor um, because I had completely lost my screen. I contacted my laryngologist, Dr. Michael Johns, and also uh, Melissa Cross, my vocal coach, and they both put me in touch with Dr. David Lott at the Mayo Hospital in Phoenix. So I went to the hospital and got a camera down my throat and you'll see some footage. My speaking voice and my singing voice were not as affected, but the scream was gone and I wanted to know why. If you're a screamer and you've ever gotten sick and you found that your ability to scream is minimalized, this will show you why. I do not want this to be confused with the inability to scream from vocal damage. The footage will show that there is no cyst nodules, rips, scar tissue, anything permanent like that. So if you are losing your ability to guttural scream, I don't want you to, to look at this as some kind of a diagnosis. You need to go to a doctor, you need to do what I did and, and see what's going on. If you continue to scream and you're not working with a doctor or vocal coach, you can do some serious permanent damage. So please take care of yourself. You only got one instrument. It's not like a guitar, you can't go out and buy another one. Without further ado, here's the videos. It sounds like a girl drunk <laughs> on the street. The like, Probably not the sound you go for. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of air is getting through and not a lot of the bulk of the my guess is it's probably what we're going to see is what we were talking about where you like especially if it's breathy you still have that same breath support that's there it's just not you're not in training that thicker tissue that's up there but we'll be able to see here so yeah So, to your ear, what's the how the same same <coughs> sound? Still more two breathing. What's different about it? Uh, it's lacking less, body and distortion, distortion. Too low end. Too trebly. Now try without the, the scope in your mouth. Is that you remember? <coughs> yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, that breathing is sense. You got a lot of mucus in that for one of it. Oh. Let me switch this here too. Is Mucinex good? For that? Very good. I didn't see like any ribs or nodules or... No ribs, no, oh yeah, okay, thank you. No, your vocal folds look just fine. And I respect those to look, to look fine. And a couple things, you got a lot of mucus right here. You have some mucus down here on your vocal folds. Everything in this video where I was sick, um, the doctor said the vocal cords, cords themselves looked healthy. It's just all the tissue around it was inflamed. So you're a screamer and you're on the road or you're in a band and uh, you get sick and you find that your scream is uh, not going well. Contact a doctor and work with your vocal coach as early as possible. I continued to do shows and I screamed through it and my tissues eventually got so swollen that they would not flap anymore. They flap together above the vocal cords with a lot of air pushing through and it creates that distortion. Also to make sure that you're not doing any more damage to your voice, rest and do the best you can to fight the infection. So a lot of rest and uh, to prevent further damage of the vocal cords. But also something Melissa Cross told me is this is why it's a good idea to learn to fry scream as well because uh, the fry scream does not depend on those tissues to flap together. The fry scream engages the true vocal cords. So thank you Dr. Michael Johns, uh, Dr. David Lott and Melissa Cross for helping me through this time and uh, I've definitely learned some lessons and uh, I am looking forward to getting myself ready to get on the road again.